everybody so today i'm really excited i should be really sleepy but i'm so excited because today i'm taking the first time home buyers class um i worked all night last night so i really should be going home go to sleep but i'm so excited i don't even need any coffee i'm taking a new journey and i want to get into real estate so the i figured the best way to start is to um take the first time home buyers class because i've never purchased a home before and i figured uh you have to start somewhere so why not start there right um now i i, I haven't taken a class um and i've been going to youtube university <laughs> But, you know, in order to get experience with things, you got to start doing something. So that's going to be the first thing I start. Um, but what I would like to know is if you guys have any input or information or any websites or any, um, uh, any organizations that can help me out, you know, I mean, feel free to leave it in the comments for me, but I am going to, I'm going to try to take you guys on the journey, let you see a little bit. I mean, but it is a class, so I'm not pretty sure I could pull my phone out in there and I want to pay attention. So whatever I can get, I'll, I'll put in the video, but you guys just wish me luck on this new journey. I want you guys to follow me, help me out, put input, you know, leave comments of what you think I'm doing wrong, what I could do better. You know, be respectful, please be respectful. But, you know, I just I just want to include you guys in this journey with me. And I want you to watch me go to the next level. So I see you in a little bit. So, hey sorry my bad so hey guys i am here i guess i'm at the right place from the address this looks like i guess it's at the library for the class i think i'm here early because i don't see anyone so let's see if it's open i don't think it's open it starts at nine I'm, i got here pretty early um, let's see. That's crazy because it says the office hours are from 10 a.m. But the class starts at 9. I wonder. Hmm. Let me see. If, let me contact someone. Um, okay, I'll hit y'all in a minute. These are all the people that showed up. It's really, really nice, guys. So, guys, this is really neat. Um, they're going to take us to a construction site to see some of the properties that they're building. So, it's really, really nice. So. I wonder if I could get a little bit of footage to show you what it looks like when we get there. So I see y'all in a little bit. We can ensure that we are putting you all in place of home ownership. So often people get discouraged. We hear all the time, my credit, I don't have mm -hmm. enough money. We are giving you guys the resources, but information without implementation is irrelevant, right? So you want to ensure you know what your why is, why you are here, because you do not want to waste your time. You cannot get this eight hours back. You understand? So anybody else, I need feedback. We got about 15 people here and I only heard three answers. Why are you here for eight hours to do a home buyer's workshop? Oh, I'm here to get a home. You here to get a home? Yeah. Why do you want a home? Because you can do that for the rest of your life without moving from here to there, going from here to the public. All right, not again, not stability. stability. Not only that, rent is going up high. Yes, Why pay for something involved. you rent when you could just own the home? Own the home. Privacy. Privacy. We talked okay. about that, yes. So we got privacy, we have stability, we have market rent increasing, right? What else? What we got? Generational wealth. Yes, Mark is big on that. I am big on that. He is definitely going to talk to you guys about that when his session comes at 1 o'clock. 
generational wealth. Listen, when my parents, they have instilled in my sister. This is my sister, y'all. I my thought sister. that. I yes. said that, but I, I said that they look alike. <laughs> um, he instilled in us, my dad instilled in us, do not rent. And when I tell you, I did not rent until I left the healthcare field to go live with family because I was taking that leap of faith to get into real estate full time. So I didn't have that steady income from the healthcare, right? Mm -hmm. So that was the only time that I actually rented. And that wasn't even a four months rent that I was paying. But he knew the importance of home ownership and he instilled that into each of his daughters. And that is what it's about. They owned the home for 20 some odd years. <laughs> Sold the home, moved into another home that they owned, right? Sold that home, that villa, which actually was inherited from another family member. Sold that home, used part of the proceeds to buy an investment property in North Carolina. And they also have their retirement home in North Carolina. So now they have two rental in two income producing properties in North Carolina and their retirement home, which they probably have about a good $200,000 worth of equity. $300,000 worth of equity in a matter of four or five, four, about five four years, years. Four years, right? Yeah. And what you do with that equity is you can then refinance, pull the money out and buy your next home. And that's why I always encourage people, don't, especially first time home buyers, don't get so fixated on the first home being your forever home. Cause I'm gonna tell you right now, it's not gonna be your forever home. You just wanna get your foot in the door. My first home I bought in Miami Gardens, she was my realtor. We were looking for a three bedroom, two bathroom. So this is, you know, what would be the living room. Um, what's, when you go to different homes, right, and you see the, the certain sizes of the homes that are new now, they're a lot smaller. So we try to just capitalize on the size to add the extra bathroom. We knew that a homeowner would want to share the bathroom. So the drywall is new. What they're doing right now is painting. Um, they put all the new electrical in here. As you can see, they cut out the holes. Uh, right now, what's happening is um, this weekend, actually, they're going to pour concrete and level this out and put brand new vinyl flooring oh, wow. in here. Um, and it was an open, they're, they're opening up the, the layout. So it was actually more closed in, like the old school arching, yeah. and they opened it up. Oh, um, wow. So this will be the kitchen. Um, okay. So it'll be a, a nice big kitchen here. Uh, you put, you know, um, a little breakfast table here. And then on this side, they actually had this as a, a, a little bathroom. So it was a half bathroom, they had a toilet in the kitchen. Uh, so that was really weird. So we, <laughs> we took a toilet out of the kitchen, and um, what we did was it was going to be a laundry room. Yeah. Oh, so wow. it'll be a stackable with um, with some shelving, etc. So nice. it'll be a lot of outlets, as you can see, for the kitchen. Um, it's going to be very modern, and uh, we'll have the, mm -hmm. the lights and all of that. Oh, so you can um, tell it's going to be good. So it's a two bedroom here. Um, again, the side rooms. These are, sorry about the smell. They're still um, putting some stuff through, but um, this is one of the bedrooms. This is technically the secondary bedroom, wow. right? So you can have children. Yeah, if you have children. And again, both of the rooms are really big, so the master bedroom, we made it a little smaller, but it made sense to add a bathroom in here, yeah. a privacy bathroom. So you have the closets there, the new impact windows. So they'll have a walk-in closet and a, uh, a full bathroom. They'll be able to have a shower in there, a toilet, etc. So it made sense for us. This was exactly the same size rooms each to just add the walk-in closet and bathroom. We thought that would be added value um, to them. So if this all tower will come up. Go finish uh, leveling out the floor with the concrete and also have laminate flooring in here as well. And then this is the shared bathroom. This was already existing. Um, so the tub and uh, the tub and the toilet will be here. So it's on the smaller side, but um, you know, yeah, that's enough. It's, it's what are you going to do? Oh, it's for the, the AC. Yeah, this will be the AC, and this will just be another oh, general closet. closet. So. 
It's a 2-2. Uh, right now, what, what is, uh, I'll probably go over kind of just the figures just so you guys have an idea of what you're trying to do. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm making more money. I'm like, I think I can live better. This is not my forever home. I just lived here for a couple years, and now I'm ready to, yeah. to to do move around a little bit better. But I still didn't have the cash. I didn't have the fifteen thousand dollar down payment. So I did a cash out refinance of my home, and I took that money out of the home that I currently lived in to move up into a better house. It was three times as much. And when I bought that home, what happened? Um, I said, okay, I can't sell this house. The old house, I'm like, okay, I can't sell it for what now I, I, I took out. When I refinanced that mortgage, though, my mortgage payment went up to three fifty one, one dollar after taking fifteen thousand dollars out. You say your mortgage payment was what? It was three fifty. This is back in nineteen ninety five. You might not be able to get a house, you know, for for the that the price that you want here, but you might be able to go on the outskirts a little bit in another county, and it's cheaper to live. And then so then you start to think of ways where okay, I can buy a house in this area, but then what will I, you know, how will I do? How will I make money? How would I feed my kids? Do I need to get another job? Do I need to find a work from home job? There's so there's you got to start figuring out like what the new scenario would be after to, to make this move like how can it be possible because it's all in your mind all of, you can figure it out it's all in your mind so when i took the money out i refund did a cash out refinance so now i got an investment so the point of having that asset holding that asset for seven years paying that mortgage for seven years i can go and get fifteen thousand dollars cash out of here mm -hmm. i don't have it on my own but now i have Happens leverage so i took it out and i was like okay i can't sell this out so it's livable so i put a tenant in there so the tenant was paying eight fifty nine hundred dollars a month. Mm -hmm. So that not only covered the mortgage, that actually covered my new mortgage. Mm -hmm. So it kind of was like a push. I kind of was like, mm -hmm. I got help now. Yeah. I was kind of, I kind of could do, do more, but really at the same cost, pretty yeah. much. Mm -hmm. So that's the power of real estate, and that's the power of what you're about to step into by making that first leap into buying a house. So I lived there seven years, moved my kids out. And so after I rented the house, I rented the section eight. So my money was coming every month. I got a letter of rent, abatement grant from the city, um, from um, section eight, from um, the housing authority. They redid um, my roof and everything. Okay. So yeah, it wow. gave me a grant. So they said, if I keep the house in the program for seven years, they would wow. just forgive the loan. So they still have that program? They do. Yes, they do. That's how I got I my house. I was just YouTube. telling her that's how I got my first house. So a, a whole new world opens yeah. up to you, basically, is what I'm trying to express. Wow. Once you buy the house, then you can start seeing more and more opportunities, just like this one, just like the one that we're working on right now. So just take the journey, take the step, get qualified. You might not, it's not for you to decide. It's for the for the, your lender to decide whether you qualify or not. Don't, don't make that decision for yourself. Don't, don't knock yourself out the box. Yeah. Just keep going through the steps. Go and get the people that you need to get the job done. Right. Right. All right, I got more to the story, but it looks like you're <laughs> 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 Yeah, the only thing I, will, I will want to make sure some one person did ask the question. I'm from GGR Home Inspections. I'm one of the home inspectors as well as the owner there. Right, we operate right here in South Florida from Port St. Lucie all the way down to Key Largo. If you guys, um, if you guys, not that night, if you guys, you guys are here to learn about, you know, the importance of a home inspection. I want to talk to you guys about what we look at as a home inspector, right? One thing that I want you to keep in mind with your home inspection is the home inspector is coming there on the day that you guys, you know, scheduled for us to come there. We're going to collect as much information as we can about the property, you know, so you can make a decision about what you want to do next, right? The home inspector isn't coming to tell you not to buy the property or to tell you to buy the property. He wants to tell you all the information that he can, meaning what type of material is on the outside of the property. Are there any pest issues? Do we have any grading issues going around? And I'll start by just talking about those things, right? So when I first get to a property, especially a property like this, that's a duplex property, I'm gonna look at it 
from two perspectives. One, the person living in the property. Then I'll also look at it from the perspective of visitors coming to the property and also the, well, third, uh, an investor, right? Actually owning the property. When you're an owner on a property, if somebody comes there and something happens to them on that property, you're ultimately, you know, the person responsible for it, right? So we want to take a look at it and tell you if there's any risk to them. Do you have any trip hazards? Do you have any electrical hazards that are not just for them? Do your kids have any issues if somebody brings their kids over? If you're in a home that has a pool, unlike this one, you know, what are the risks that they have, right? So those are, that's the perspective I will take or any of my inspectors when they come to a property. Then once I get there, now I need to make decisions about how I'm going to inspect it. This property itself, we're gonna look at four major things that we're gonna you know, really have conversation about. Is the roof, right? How old is the roof? Is it damaged? Is it performing? Does it need to be replaced? What will the cost of it be to replace that roof? Uh, this roof right here, of course, they say they just replaced it. I'm not sure, it looks like they actually put three tab up there. So a three tab roof, and how do I know that? So a three tab roof is very flat, and I know this is shingle roof. If you look at that one, you can see it a lot more clear, what I mean, and you can see those as well. If it was a architectural shingle roof, there would be a little bit of layer, right? Architecturals look like a bit of art, right? They're three dimensional as you look at them on top of the roof, and they actually give the roof a little bit of design. Right, those roofs typically last in Florida 15 to 20 years. Yes, These yes. roofs typically yeah. last 10 to 15 years, right? So something to keep in mind whether you're responsible for the roof or not, because at the end of the day, yeah. typically they pull in and you guys will pay for the roof. We're gonna then look at all of the material on the outside and we're gonna let you know, is there any cracks in the material, right? What, no matter how small or how big the cracks are, because it might be small today, but then it can continue to deteriorate over time. Why do we care about the cracks? Because we want to keep the water outside of the walls, outside of the house, right? So is there any openings in the wall? As you guys look at this wall right here, if I move out the way, you guys see any cracking? Yeah, you see it? And you actually, you actually use the word step, right? Mm -hmm. And that is what we would use for seeing this. This crack right here is called step mortar cracking, right? Going up, typically that type of cracking is caused from settlement, meaning when the property moves, that's how uh, the concrete decided to crack out. If it decided to keep on progressing, you know, coming up and then damaging this wall even more, it would be a more serious issue. Our recommendation for this one would be to seal it and monitor it. That's all it needs in this area. So a crack doesn't mean that you have a structural issue. Concrete will crack homes do move right have you ever put a paver down in the grass at your uh at your house or even anywhere nearby you see how it settles into the dirt into the soil that's what's going to happen with every building right it has to settle after it's put in place after the first five years or so it starts to move less and less and less so you shouldn't really see any new cracks developing all the cracks should happen as much as they should if you see anything developing after that you're looking around windows door jams and a quarter of the walls to keep in the mind if you have any additional sediment that you shouldn't have right we're going to let you know if you need the material that needs to be repainted right paint is maybe something we just look at as aesthetics but paint helps to protect and seal the property so they've done a bunch of prep work right here around the openings closing them up to get ready to actually paint this property which is overdue yeah, you know, and I only know that just uh, off the timing that we're here. As we come around the property, we're gonna look at the wood on the outside. This piece of wood is called a fascia board, right? We wanna make sure that the fascia board isn't getting any moisture damage to allow for pests to come inside or, you know, termites or WDL, wood destroying organisms to form on that board as well. This one obviously is damaged at the house. Right, these two mechanicals, they work to draw moisture out of the house, right? And cool, cool off the house at the same time. A lot of the times as homeowners, we manage it to keep ourselves cool, right? But we need to manage it to keep the moisture levels down inside the house, which ultimately will keep you cool, right? You wanna stay under 60% relative humidity inside of your homes, right? Typical is somewhere between 50 to 60. We usually stay around 55 in our house. 
anything over 60, you can create conditions conducive to mold, right? And that's where you'll get hot order, hot air, cold air mixing. You can possibly get some condensation somewhere in the home and that, and that can produce the growth that you may see in different areas. Anybody ever see it outside their registers? The ceiling, the, the AC vents? Mm. Yeah, mm. that's usually what's causing it. So if you have a unit, sometimes if you have a unit inside, you, can, you guys got maybe five, 10 minutes left of, of the tour. So when we first come inside a property, we're gonna make the decision on whether we're gonna go left or go right. And we're gonna literally wrap the wall and inspect everything that we can as we wrap the wall. So when I come through this wall, I'm looking at the lighting fixtures, right? I know just through experience, these are for recessed lights. Whenever we have remodels on properties, we find exposed wiring on recessed lights. What that, that means. So you see this wire right here, they will be tied together with old wiring from another fixture inside of the actual ceiling to make the connection between that and the light. That should not be that way. Anything inside the ceiling should always be in what's called a junction box or a day box. All right? So that's where we usually find the hazard. So if you go in a home and you know you're purchasing, you're remodeling, or you're talking to your inspector, you say, hey, did you see any exposed wires, you know, when it comes to that. This home is being done from scratch. The likelihood of them having the exposed wires are pretty low when it's done. Usually it's a one-off, you know, a handyman special or a homeowner that thinks they, you know, uh, know how to wire. And they just leave that hazard unknowingly. When we go to each one of the outlets, as we go through, we'll test each one of the outlets, right? And we want to make sure that the outlet is grounded, is not uh, wired incorrectly, meaning it has possibly reverse polarity on it. And if you plug something in, there's a chance that you may be shocked or somebody else may be shocked on the property. Every window we go to, we'll check and make sure that it's operable. If we can get to it, mind you, anything that is in the way of anything as we go through, we won't move it. Right? Now, if there's a light item, if there's a bucket, I will move it. But you will have some inspectors that will move absolutely nothing. Right? So just kind of understand you got that difference out there. We move things that we can move that are reasonable. If there's a couch in front of the window, the chances of us checking those windows are slim to none because we won't be able to access it. We'll continue around. We'll check every door, making sure everything's sealed up. In this case, you guys got a chance to see the slab. Right? In most cases, we do not get a chance to see the slab. You can only see the exterior portions of the slab outside of the house. If you're ever concerned about an area having water damage prior or water risk, when you're walking around the property, look at the, the bottom of the wall and you can see how far the water has come up in the area. Right? And we always are flooding. So the water will stain the wall. And that'll kind of give you an idea of where does normal water go. You can look at the fence the same way, right? You see where the water comes up. So in this area, the water has come up to the finished flooring at some point, but it doesn't look like it actually came inside of the units themselves. Just looking at the floorboards, that's how I, I don't see any water damage on the floorboards. Yep. So if you come, continue to come through, we're going to check your air vents to make sure that we're getting flow. And I don't want to walk you guys there. It's slippery. I just actually had a little bit of a slip in my left foot but we'll use infrared technology to give us the difference in the air temperatures in the area. And that's what we're using to also detect leaks. When, you, when somebody is using infrared technology in their inspections, it is only to see the difference in temperatures in the area, and then the inspector, through their knowledge of what's in the area, can make a decision. So in this case, if you guys can probably come around a little bit, this area is going to have the inside unit for the HVAC. I won't bring you all the way back. This is going to have your HVAC unit for the inside of the house. The things you want to want to keep an eye on for that is do you have any leaks underneath it? There's going to be a drain line coming to it. You want to make sure your tape to your ducts are always intact. Yeah. So you want to maintenance that on the regular. Recently, I did find a leak inside of the house near the HVAC system, right? I used infrared technology to show me that it was actually wet in the area. 
But I knew that there was no plumbing in the area. I knew I had an HVAC closet. So when I went into the attic, I looked at that area to see what was possibly causing it. And we found that there was a gap between the actual duct going into the attic, connecting to the rest of the duct. And that created some conversation. And that concern, conversation created for me, right? So hot air mixed with cold air will always condensate if it has the right conditions. Right. I'll give you guys a few minutes to move around yourself. Do you have any questions for me? I know we're at five. Let's put it correctly. It's all protected because you don't want to go put a nail through a wall and then you hit an electrical line and end up getting shot, right? So that's that's something we can see before they put the drywall in. Then we'll do a final inspection before you do your blue tape inspection, right? To make sure that everything is good after they put everything in. A lot of the things that we find at that time are leak issues. I got you rocking right now. Leak issues with the plumbing, nobody lives in the property, right? So we want to run hundreds of gallons of water to put as much pressure as we can on there. The last new construction that I actually did a 11 month warranty on, or one of the new constructions, they didn't have their flooring in, which was great. We found a leak underneath the island. I hadn't even run water under, uh, downstairs yet. I had only ran up there. But because I put so much pressure on it, it was able to actually fill that leak underneath the slab before they put their flooring in. 